the interactive technical manual for approved Federation visitors and Starfleet personnel is now active on this terminal. Please indicate whether you wish to resume from a previously saved tour file or begin again. Please indicate whether you wish to begin with a guided tour or explore on your own initiative. Exterior view of the Galaxy Class Starship USS Enterprise NCC 1701D. Mission critical systems aboard a Galaxy Class Starship include propulsion, science, navigation, and tactical. Primary warp propulsion aboard the Enterprise is provided by a fifth phase matter antimatter reactor. Secondary impulse propulsion power is provided by fusion drive motors. The ship's two warp field nacelles serve as termination points for the energetic plasma created by the matter antimatter reaction. Within each nacelle, material is directed by the plasma injection system into the warp field coils and converted into usable propulsion energy. The ship's two warp field nacelles serve as termination points for the energetic plasma created by the matter-antimatter reaction. Within each nacelle, material is directed by the plasma injection system into the warp field coils and converted into usable propulsion energy. The Enterprise's warp field coils generate an intense multi-layered energy field around the starship. Manipulation of this field produces the necessary propulsive effect to drive the ship through and beyond the speed of light. Subspace field geometry refers to the specific energy field alignments associated with a particular starship. Principal sublight propulsion, as well as specific auxiliary power requirements, are handled by the impulse propulsion system. This system is powered by a deuterium fusion reaction used in conjunction with a compact space-time driver coil. Impulse drive provides power for principal sublight propulsion of the Enterprise. Power is derived from two sets of fusion power engines, the main impulse engine and the saucer module impulse engines. Due to the time dilation effect encountered at appreciable fractions of light speed, extended flight at high relativistic speeds can place mission objectives in jeopardy. Normal impulse operations are therefore limited to a velocity of 0.25 c. The ship's reaction control system is designed primarily for sublight station keeping operations. Individual thrusters are grouped into independent saucer module and battle section assemblies. Science and navigation systems are essential to the fulfillment of primary mission duties, including research and exploration. There are three primary sensor systems aboard the Enterprise, the Long Range Array, the Lateral Array, and the Navigational Sensors. The Long Range Sensor Array is located in the engineering hull directly behind the main deflector dish. This array contains a cluster of high-power active and passive subspace frequency sensors. Each lateral sensor array consists of a continuous rack in which a series of modular sensor instrument pallets are mounted. Starfleet sensor pallets are designed for easy replacement and customization of instrumentation. Two-thirds of all pallet positions are occupied by standard science sensor packages. Navigational sensors constantly process incoming sensor data to acquire usable position and velocity information. These sensors and dedicated analytical circuitry intentionally mimic biological solutions to the problem of navigation. The main deflector dish supports the navigational deflector emitter array. 
It focuses the deflector beam into a powerful tractor deflector and a series of low-level shields to sweep aside objects and particles in the ship's path. The saucer deflectors act as a backup to the main deflector dish. In separated flight mode, it is utilized in place of the main deflector by the saucer module. Tractor emitters forcefully repel or attract remote objects utilizing superimposed subspace graviton force beams. The transporter emitter pad array transmits and receives the transporter matter stream and the annular confinement beam. The transporter targeting scanners consist of 15 partially redundant sensor clusters that determine transporter coordinates, including bearing, range, and relative velocity. Tactical systems refer to starship equipment and personnel involved in encounters with threat forces. Phasers are directed energy devices currently in use aboard all Starfleet vehicles. The term comes from the energy producing process used to power these devices. Phaser, or phased energy rectification, is the common term for a complex energy release process. Phaser devices were developed to replace pure EM devices such as lasers and particle beam accelerators. Phaser bank emplacements are arranged in 12 arrays located on the dorsal and ventral surfaces. Two additional arrays provide lateral coverage. Phaser activation begins upon command authorization. Energetic plasma is directed into the pre-fire chamber and the resulting energy packet is discharged through an emitter chamber. Phaser operational tactics are determined by an extensive set of practical and theoretical scenarios stored within the computer. Typical phaser-related maneuvers deal with sublight starship velocities due to the dissipation of phaser energy in the vicinity of moving warp fields. Photon torpedoes are Starfleet's primary warp-capable defensive weapons system. Standard photon torpedo configuration includes deuterium and anti-deuterium holding tanks, central combiner tank, magnetic suspension components, target acquisition, guidance, and detonation assemblies, and warp sustainer engine. Photon torpedoes are directed against threat force targets at distances from 15 to nearly 3,500,000 kilometers. Targeting is directed by the tactical officer following command authorization. The computer maintains regularly updated files of actual and simulated threat tracking algorithms, including adaptive algorithms for new threat targets. Total destruction of the USS Enterprise or either of its separated components can be initiated by special command authorization procedures. Initiation of the auto-destruct sequence can only be ordered by authorized command personnel. Input will be accepted from officers ranking from captain to operations manager. Under the preferred auto-destruct scenario, matter from the primary deuterium tanks and antimatter from the storage pods on Deck 42 are expelled simultaneously. The secondary destruct scenario includes detonation of ordnance placed at key locations throughout the starship. This scenario is invoked for the saucer module during separated flight mode. Main structural subsystems of the USS Enterprise include skeletal framework, external hull, 
inertial damping system, and structural integrity field. The main skeletal structure consists of a tritanium duranium space frame, a secondary framework of terminium trusses, the inner hull structure, and the exterior hull substrate. An integrated coordinate system utilizing standard three-dimensional vertex and vector measuring schemes governs manufacturing, repair, and operational structural reference points aboard all Starfleet vessels. Exterior hull layers provide structural and atmospheric integrity, waveguides and field conductive members for the structural integrity field, and pathways for other utilities. The structural integrity field system provides a network of force field segments to compensate for propulsive and other structural load factors that otherwise exceed the design limits of the space frame. The inertial damping field system generates a controlled series of variable symmetry force fields to absorb the inertial forces of spaceflight. Failure of the structural integrity field or the inertial damping field implies catastrophic consequences. Failure of any two of the five field generators requires immediate initiation of alert status.